one man story really and that man is from Bowling Green Ohio his name is Scott Hamilton he's the defending world champion not only is he leading right now but he has a tremendous lead in fact should he finish either first second or third in the free skating phase he will still successfully defend his title and I don't think that any American man has so dominated this sport not even the Jenkins brothers since well since the man I work with here Dick Button when he won five world championships and two Olympic championships but Scotty's come along all of a sudden in a burst unlike you Dick he was fourth in the Olympics two years ago now here he is two years later the dominant figure in the sport how do you account for it well I think that's be because the sport of figure skating is one which is not only a sport but also an art form and as such it is constantly changing and constantly developing and any skater that tries to tread water is going to find themselves swept right out to sea they're not going to be able to change and develop with the sport that in a sense is what's happened to David Santee he hasn't improved himself he hasn't changed really basically over the last three years and as a result he finally has found himself knocked down in the final standing but Scott Hamilton has developed his jumping is precise and clean and very good his spins are emerging his choreography is interesting and different he's got a personality that he's put over all of this which is quite unique to him it's his own and on top of that he's added a sense of humor and that's kind of the nicest element of all and I think when you add all of these things together it explains why he has advanced so rapidly and is now the world champion and finds himself in such a wonderful position finds himself as you will see right here in first place once again coming to the final phase in second place is Jean-Christophe Simon of France and in third place Norbert Schramm of West Germany a little bit earlier Dick had a chance to talk with a young man who finds himself in the position of defending world champion Scotty Hamilton hey Scott well this is the year that you're the defending champion not the challenger is it a big difference not at all it really isn't any difference at all. no it's really it's, it's been hard I've been paranoid all week and uh, I've been doubting myself a lot and uh, pulling my hair out. I didn't think it was going to be the same as nationals but uh, it's been really difficult well what's the difference it's the world championships um, nationals you're pretty much going around four or five different really good skaters that you know are at your level or whatever at world there's about uh, 15 16 so it's a lot different and plus all week long you're looking at the official draw the official this the official that of the world championships and it's, it's a lot more intimidating specifically how is it different to be the defending champion rather than the challenger uh, it's uh, I don't know it's not fun anymore it's not it's more of a job it's I don't know how you did it you went through years of seven years did you defend that title uh, whatever uh, whatever anyway it's just uh, it's more of a uh, paranoia than it is you know uh, earning a position going for a position it's it's more or less losing a position you don't think about winning it you think about losing it and as much as it's made me neurotic this year and as much as it's, I've really had to work with it I don't think I could live without it and I, I really want it again another year good luck oh, thanks. Thanks. very well summed up by the young man from Ohio when his turn comes, we'll see how he reacts to his very difficult position as King of the Hill. It was Bishop Absalon here, not Hans Christian Andersen, who founded Copenhagen in 1167, 815 years ago. And the first skater we'll see is David Santee of Park Ridge, Illinois, a silver medalist in these championships last year. He won't be this time. After a good showing in the compulsory or school figures, he had an unfortunate short program performance. So he's seventh, coming to this final phase. Two years ago in the Olympics, he finished ahead of Scott Hamilton. He was fourth. Scotty was fifth. Back to that point in their careers, he had actually dominated Scott Hamilton. And he won a silver medal behind Scotty, but he's never been able to catch Scott again since the Olympics. And I think probably the reason for that is that we see the same kind of skating all the way through this program that we've seen consistently. Uh, the jumps have always been good, but not great. Slightly corkscrewed at the end. Watch the landing on this with the free leg that twists around choreography hasn't been really zingy hasn't stood out and it hasn't shown a really creative personality on his part 
And I think that's probably the reason why David Sandy has not been able to find himself in the first place position. Here's his now very familiar portion of the program, skated to the music from Rocky. Remember, he actually motivated himself by seeing the movie some seven or eight times. This, by the way, will be the last time he'll skate to this music as an amateur. David has said he's going to turn professional, possibly as soon as tonight. Always a very nice final move, that so-called death drop at the end of his program. So we would say farewell as an amateur to a young man who brought us a lot of pleasure some great performances. Dave Santee. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him as a professional skater, and they still like him there in the American crowd. He's been a very popular young man and a, and a nice young man, and it's been interesting to watch his career, hasn't it? It sure has. And they're still whooping it up for him. David Santee on his way to the pros. This is Jean-Christophe Simon of France. He led this competition after the compulsory figures, but now is in second place coming to the final free skating performance. We have the marks for David Santee, by the way. Five fours, five fives, and five sixes. Very good marks, not great. Simon, all around. Very nice and very consistent, but he just doesn't stand out in any one aspect of skating. Good triple jumps, that triple toe loop, very nice and very neat and clean. But you know, they we see those in every program now. They're no longer unique. triple jumps are really uh, wonderful to see, but when you get right down to it, I don't think we've seen a better triple lutz since the days of Don Jackson, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You remember that, Jim? Prague, Czechoslovakia, World Championships, 1962. I remember it well. It's difficult to say what makes that difference, isn't it, Nick? Once you've gotten past mastering the technical thing of doing the jumps, there's something else contact with the crowd and artistry perhaps. it's called creativity and it's called loving the fine art of figure skating but competitively speaking you can't expect to do that kind of a jump and still win a competition realistically i would think he's trying to hold on to second place here of course scott hamilton's yet to come he does have to do his performance Jean-Christophe Simon, strong in the school figures, looked down a bit in the short program, and the judges will decide how he did here in the free skating. <laughs>